choice of electric cars here in Australia seems to be growing every time you turn your phone on, look on Facebook, look on some of the car review websites. There seems to be a new model coming out pretty much every month. In today's video, we're looking at the MG ZS EV, a car that's been around for a couple of years now, to see if it can compete with some of the newer offerings from some of the Chinese manufacturers, but also other brands as well. So here on Webby on Cars, today we're looking at the MG ZS EV to see what the good, the bad and the ugly is all about. So come and join me for the video as we give you all the details and take you for a ride. So first off, let's talk models. There's three different specifications in the ZS EV lineup, starting with the Excite, which is just over $45,000 drive away. That's the fairly basic model. You can then step up to the Essence at just over $48,000 which will give you nice features like a leather interior and the big sunroof. And then we get the long range, which we're testing today, which is just over $55,000, which is the same specification as the mid-range Essence, but has the long range battery. So let's talk about battery and performance. The, the Excite and the Essence both get a 51 kilowatt hour battery, which is good for 320 kilometers of range. The electric motor is 130 kilowatt and it's got 280 newton meters of torque. The long range gets a 72 kilowatt hour battery, which is good for 440 kilometers of range. And the electric motor is slightly down on power at 115 kilowatt, but torque remains the same at 280 newton meters. I think they've deliberately reduced the power of the electric motor to maximize the range in the car. And in real world terms, you're not really gonna notice 15 kilowatt power anyway. Now in terms of charging the ZSEV, you can use your standard plug socket at home, but that will take an eternity. I'd recommend investing in a fast charger, which MG will actually sell you by the way. Uh, a 7 kilowatt is $1,199 plus installation. Or if you've got a three phase at home, you can actually get uh, an 11 kilowatt charger for $1,299 plus installation, um, which will obviously make things a little bit quicker for you. With a 7 kilowatt charger, it means you can charge the 51 kilowatt hour battery in the two lower models in around about seven or eight hours, depending on how much charge you've got left. With the bigger battery, you're looking around 10 hours. Um, but again, if you charge that overnight, you're gonna be ready with 100% by the time you go to work in the morning. The 11, 11 kilowatt hour charger will obviously reduce that time accordingly. Now you can also charge these obviously at public charges, but the maximum amount of power these can take is actually 60 kilowatts per hour. But that's enough to give you a good charge. It's just out and about in the car. An hour is gonna give you 60 kilowatts worth of power, which in the base models will fully charge the car. And this top of the range long range model is going to get you most of the way so 60 kilowatts per hour isn't going to necessarily uh, hamper your driving and a couple of other bits worth mentioning is that mg give you a seven year warranty on this vehicle and that includes the battery as well and its unlimited mileage which i think is absolutely fantastic some other manufacturers would give you a long warranty on the car itself but only 150,000 or 160,000 kilometers on the battery in fairness for a lot of people, that would be plenty. But if you're going to be commuting and doing long journeys in this car, having unlimited mileage is going to be a real benefit for you. The servicing of this MG ZS EV is only required every two years or 20,000 kilometers, because really there's not that many moving parts and it's not that expensive. I had a quick look on the MG website. That first service at two years or 20,000 kilometers is only $295. So that's pretty reasonable in my eyes. The next one is a bit more expensive. So when you get to four years or 40,000 kilometers, it's just over $800. But if you average it out over four years, let's say $1,000, it's not that expensive actually. So running an electric car can be quite efficient and cheap. So what are some of the good points and the bad points about this MG ZS EV? Some people actually like their electric car to look like a normal car. And the ZS does that pretty well. The only real telltale sign is on the front we well, have actually got no real grill at the front. You've got this sort of honeycomb effect and you've got the door there for charging your car up. And that's the only really telltale sign this is an electric car. Other than that, just looks like a standard MG ZS. And for some people, that's what they want. So looking at some of the specification on the outside of this ZS EV, let's look at some of the highlights. So we've got some nice stuff like LED headlights. We've got some nice 17 inch alloy wheels with these aero covers. We get some nice chrome uh, surrounds around the windows. We've got keyless entry, we've got roof rails, we've got a full length panoramic sunroof. So for $55,000, actually it's quite well specified. 
The only downside is nowadays $55,000. There's a lot of choice out there in electric cars, and some of them are much more modern than this one, because this has been out a few years now. Coming around to the back of the ZS, and it's actually quite an attractive rear end for the car. It's nice and sort of rounded. We've got LED tail lights, got a little EV badge to let us know that this is an electric car. Uh, no exhaust down the bottom, obviously, because it's electric, but we've got some nice little silver trims down there, which um, sort of brighten up the rear end of the car. The MG badge flips up for opening the tailgate. I'm surprised it's not electric, actually, because for $55,000, I was half expecting that to be electric. The size of the boot is actually pretty decent. You can certainly get your week shopping in here. Um, MG do provide you with a standard cable to plug your car into your plug socket at home. Uh, but as I mentioned a minute ago, I didn't store a fast charger at home because this will take you forever to charge your electric car. The rear seats have got a 60-40 split so you can extend your luggage area a bit further uh, if you've got some big items to carry. But generally overall, a pretty decent boot space. So the next thing we're going to do is actually have a look inside this ZSEV. I can show you some of the features and technology that are standard. Before we do that though, if you're enjoying the video, give it a like, share it with your friends and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because that will tell you every time a new video comes live. Right, so we're going to start at the front of the car because it makes sense. Keyless entry is standard as you would expect. Um, let's have a look at the door trims first of all because I just want to show you some of the highlights here. Um, we've got this nice padded sort of armrest section here. This nice sort of carbon fiber effect trim with some red stitching, uh, which just gives the sort of interior a bit of brightness. And this nice silver trim here at the top of the door as well. Looking at the seats themselves, uh, the same sort of trim from the door follows onto the seat. So it's nice soft leather uh, with the red stitching all around. Again, just to give the interior a bit of color. The driver's seat is electrically operated, which is nice. Um, and then we come out to have a look at the steering wheel, which again gives a nice sort of sporty feel with this perforated leather section here where you grip it. Uh, also the red stitch in there. And then the MG badge in the middle, which are for us older people will hark you back to the days when MG used to make two-door sports cars. Anyway, we're having a look at the electric cars these days. Um, the interior itself I think is actually quite nice. It's definitely got that sort of like non-electric feel about it. Um, it doesn't scream this is an electric car which for some people is exactly what they're looking for. So this is the view from the driver's seat. Uh, so your lovely leather steering wheel here in front of us. Uh, buttons on the left hand side for your volume, uh, for your radio and track selection on playlists uh, and then be able to answer your phone. The buttons here on the right hand side operate the screen here in front of us, uh, which gives us plenty of information. Uh, so we're looking at things like, let's just zoom in a little bit there, so over on the left hand side, we can see we've got the digital speedo. And then on the right hand side, it shows you either how much power you're using uh, as you're accelerating, or if you're decelerating, it'll actually show you how much power you're putting back into the battery. Uh, if we zoom in a little bit further, so just down the bottom there, so we've got a trip meter there. So that can show you things like how long you've been driving, your distance you've been driving, your average speed, and then your average uh, sort of usage of power. We can also see just to the right at the bottom of the screen there, I've got 71% currently left in the battery. And then the bottom left, it shows you I've got 298 kilometers left of range. Uh, so that's actually not too terrible. Uh, the word normal just shows that the car is currently in the normal driving mode. Uh, so there's three driving modes, basically eco, nor, and sport. So let's just zoom out again. Um, so yeah, as you can see, the actual sort of driving area is quite pleasant. Now then we come over to this huge 10 inch screen here in the middle of the uh, dashboard. Some of the touch buttons down here operate some of the functions of the screen. So we've got a little home button, which will take us back to that home screen there. And the downside to this, and this is something I mentioned in my previous video with the HS, is that the built-in systems like the sat-nav are particularly slow. So you do need to plug in your phone via your Apple CarPlay or your Android Auto and get all the functionality that comes from your phone. Unfortunately, that's not wireless, which is a bit of a shame, really, because um, a lot of cars these days now have a wireless um, sort of CarPlay or Android Auto setup. So what you have to do is basically go old-fashioned and plug it in via a cable via one of the two USB connectors down just under there. Uh, we do get a wireless charging pad just here, though, which is quite nice. Uh, so you can charge several devices all at once. 
We've got a second USB, which is actually a USB-C, so that's good for fast charging. Uh, then also a 12 volt power socket there, just to the left. Now one feature I really do like about this ZS is this gear selector here. It's kind of a rotary dial, which you sort of twist left and right to choose gear. And then you push it in to put the car into park. So I actually think that's quite cool. So then we've also got the three buttons here just in front of the gear selector. The mode button will toggle between Eco, Normal and Sport for the drive modes. KERS is how much power you can put back into the battery when you're doing regenerative braking. And so it's basically like one pedal driving. If we then flick the battery button, we go up to the screen and that will show us the current state of the battery. So it shows 71% charge for a range of 298 kilometers. Uh, and the green bar there sort of replicates that. It then also tells me that if I was to charge the car up to 100%, it can be a range of 437 kilometers, which is basically bang on that WLTP says this car can do at 440. Uh, so that's actually pretty cool to see that this is pretty accurate. Uh, then behind that, we've got the handbrake function there. So that's electronic handbrake with an auto hold function. Uh, we've then also got a nice couple of deep cup holders there as well uh, with a little lid so you can hide stuff away from prying eyes when the car's um, left unattended. You've then got a nice armrest here as well which lifts up. Uh, that's also got a bit more storage underneath that as well. Uh, so just up here in the overhead console we've got the buttons here to operate the electric sunroof. Uh, this one at the back allows you to open up the electric blind uh, to let a bit more sun in. The blind is quite handy on a hot day like today because it stops the car getting too hot inside. Um, but yeah, have a look at just how much light we can get coming into the car uh, with that huge sunroof. Uh, the other button just up here will actually open the glass itself. Uh, so we've got like a, a tilt function there. Uh, so you can just let a little bit of air come in through the car just a bit of circulate some air around. Um, or we can flick it all the way back. And then as you can see, the sunroof opens fully and that's lots of nice fresh air into the cabin. In terms of driver comfort in the front of the ZS EV, um, it's actually quite a nice sort of seating position. Steering wheel is sort of dead straight in front of you, it's not offset or anything like that. Um, the view out is pretty decent too. We've got decent size side windows. There's a great view out of the road ahead in front of you. And you do sit slightly higher up than you do in something like a sort of Volkswagen Golf or something like that. So you've got that elevated driving position. The dash layout in front of you is nice and clear as well. And that nice big screen there in the centre, which you don't really have to take your eyes off the road too much to look at your maps or your music. So with my driving position sorted out, let's jump in the back and see how much space we've got and also some of the features to cater for rear passengers. So as you can see there, getting into the back of the ZS EV is really simple. The doors open nice and wide so it's easy to get in and out. And you don't have a sloping roof line like you do in some cars, so it's nice and straight. You don't have to duck down too much to get in, uh, so it's nice and easy. In terms of space in the back here, I've got acres of legroom behind my own seating position. Uh, if I was to stretch my legs out, my feet go under the driver's seat. Um, so it's actually, for a small car, quite a lot of space in the back here. Headroom, yeah, not so much. I'm only five foot six, my head's almost touching the ceiling. Um, you do obviously lose a little bit of headroom when you've got a sunroof, um, but the benefit of sunroof is, is obviously having the extra light come in to make it nice and light and airy inside the car. Uh, it's nice to see we get some air vents here in the middle, plus we've also got a couple of USB charging points for mobile devices, uh, one of them being a USB-C fast charger, which is pretty cool. Uh, in terms of storage, we've got a little door pocket down here. We haven't got a fold-down centre armrest, and that's a bit of an omission uh, in my eyes. Because when you've got rear passengers, which is mostly kids, you'd need some sort of like armrest so they can put their cups in there, um, or just lean on generally if they're sort of chilling out as you're driving along. So yeah, come on MG, you should have put an armrest in the back of this car. Uh, it's a bit of an omission in my books. Um, you do get the Isofix child mounting points in the back as well, and the outer two seats. Um, so at least you can put your baby seats in the back. But overall, it's actually not too bad back here, uh, apart from that missing armrest. There's plenty of space, it's nice and light and airy. You actually get a decent view as well. There's decent sized rear sized windows, you get a, a decent view out from in between the two front seats. Um, so the experience in the back of the car is actually quite pleasant.
So here we are on the open road in the ZSEV then. Um, first impressions, quite pleasant to drive if I'm honest. Good view of the road ahead, because you sit a little bit higher, being this is an SUV. The actual driving experience is quite nice. The steering is really well weighted. And by that I mean when you turn the steering wheel you can actually feel the connection between the steering wheel and the front wheels. With some cars with that power steering they feel a bit over assisted, too light. Um, but this is actually really well weighted, so I quite like that. Performance is pretty brisk, um, although we've only got 115 kilowatt, you know, it's certainly got usable power to get you in and out of trouble. The ride comfort is also pretty good. The suspension is a little bit on the firm side, which is traditional with electric cars. And you only tend to really feel it if you're going on a road that's a little bit uneven, or if you've got a pothole, um, or even if you go over a speed bump. Um, which you definitely have to slow down for, by the way. Um, otherwise, it will shake your fit in loose. Road noise is actually pretty good too. I don't know if you can hear, there's a little bit of wind noise going on on the outside of the car because there's a bit of wind today. Um, but generally, noise coming into the cabin is actually okay. The only time you really hear it is if you've got sort of a poor road surface. Um, so you do kick up a little bit of road noise from that. Uh, but generally road noise, tyre noise and that sort of thing um, is actually sort of kept to a minimum inside the cabin. As you're driving along, it's actually quite easy to read the display in front of the driver uh, in terms of obviously how fast you're going, what the battery life is like in the car. Um, so you don't really have to take your eyes off the road too much, which is obviously very important. The only downside I'm experiencing at the moment because I'm filming as I'm driving is I can't use the Apple CarPlay because you do have to plug it in to use your Apple CarPlay, it's not a wireless version. The downside to that is that these MG infotainment systems are pretty sort of basic, they're a little bit slow. Um, I would definitely use either your phone, be it an Apple uh, or an Android phone, to actually sort of plug in to use your Google Maps or something like that uh, because they're much better, they're quicker. Um, and just nicer to use basically. Plus, if you're old, you can listen to music um, on your phone as well. I've been lucky enough to drive quite a few electric cars in the last few years. And the more you drive them, the more they become sort of, they feel the norm. They feel sort of like, you know, normal these days. And it's like, it's only when you get back into something that's got a petrol engine or maybe even a diesel. And they feel a little bit sort of archaic and slow and that sort of thing. Whereas electric is, it's obviously the latest and greatest thing that everybody's talking about. And you get that instant acceleration as soon as you put your foot down, there's no delay, in, you know, like a petrol engine building up power. And it's just nice and quiet and relaxing. So there's definitely a place for electric cars for everybody. Um, and say so the more and more I drive them, the more and more I tend to like them. Um, and I'm a petrol head, I love you know, Ferraris, Porsches and, you know, supercars and things like that. But as a day-to-day -day thing, you know, electric cars definitely have their place. The charging infrastructure is even getting better here in Australia as well. Not that long ago, you really had to search to find a charging station. But nowadays, there's more and more popping up pretty much everywhere. Networks like Chartrox, EV and EV Up, there's more charging locations pretty much in most places nowadays, shopping centres, servos, uh, hospitals, um, yeah, they seem to be sort of appearing everywhere. And there's plenty of apps you can get that help you locate your near nearest charger point as well. Something else that MG also do, they have an app called iSmart, so you can obviously download that to your phone, connect it to your car, and that will tell you things like, obviously, how much range you've got in your battery. But also allows you to do things like turn the car on so you can switch the air conditioning on in the summer to cool the car down before you get in. Unfortunately, I wasn't, many, wasn't able to um, experience that this week because someone had already got their phone connected to this car. Um, and I couldn't find a way of actually getting it disconnected so I could actually try it on my phone uh, and see what the app was like. So MG claims this can do 440 kilometers on a single charge. In the week I've had it, I've only actually had to charge the car once. And that was probably a bit of my own range anxiety, if I'm honest. 
I picked the car up on a Wednesday and I dropped it back on a Wednesday because I always have the cars for a week. I actually charged it up on the Saturday at work because we've got some fast chargers at my work. And it took it all the way back up to 100%. And it had it shown me a range of 430 kilometers. So it's pretty much bang on what the WLTP figures suggest. I'm lucky enough that my round trip to work is only 20 kilometers every day. So a full charge for me would last me two to three weeks, depending on obviously what other traveling I did. So range anxiety nowadays, it's not really something you have to worry about, I don't think. If you can get a car that does somewhere around 400 kilometers to a charge for most people that will last them a week or two weeks something like that depending on how you're driving but even if you have to charge twice a week installing a fast charger at home you know it isn't necessarily a big expense and you can make sure your car is charged up overnight so that it's at 100 percent or thereabouts in the morning when you leave to work or wherever you're going uh, so there you go then that is the mg zs ev uh, my thoughts and opinions I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and also hit that notification bell to find out the next time a new video comes out. If you've got any questions or comments about this car, feel free to leave them in the comments section for me below, and I will answer your questions as soon as I can. So that just leaves me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next video.